Hello everyone, welcome today to TAMLAB72. It's also our first EMEA-based TAMLAB in terms of its presentation and time zone. Today we're going to be looking at vRealize Network Insight with a technical feature walkthrough by our presenters Rahul and Ramazan. And I will stop sharing and pass over straight to them. Thank you very much. Thanks Dean, uh, is the screen visible? Yeah, we're all good. All right, great. So firstly, big thanks to you, Dean, for letting us this first TAM Lab session hosted from EMEA. I'm really excited to be part of this. Uh, good afternoon, um, good morning, everyone. My name is Rahul, and I'm part of the TAM Metna based in UAE. And with me, I have my colleague, Ramazan, uh, who is based out of Turkey. So um, in this session, um, Ramazan and I would be covering a few features or use cases commonly seen being used by our customers. Um, in interest of time because it's it's a it's a whole lot of things which you can actually do with network insight and the agenda goes as follows uh, with a quick overview of vrni we will dive into the below topics as you see followed by a demo which respectively are the uh, security planning uh, mostly 101 um, adding an application why and how we do that uh, monitoring NSXT and Kubernetes using VRNI, what kind of dashboards to expect, and finally integration with VROps, right? So just to, uh, for those of you who are new, just to give, uh, start on why VRNI, as we see the changing dynamics of networking, which is now not only restricted to virtual infrastructures, it scales to newer or modern application models like containerized workloads, public and hybrid cloud, telcos, edges, so the challenge is always a single pane or unified visibility into the network traffic flow and analyzing the same for use cases like, let's say, troubleshooting or even security planning, right? So Raul, even so, yep. sorry to stop you there. Could you just be a little bit closer to your microphone, please? That would be fantastic. Um, is, it, is it better now? Yes, yeah, just that little bit louder. That's brilliant. Okay, so, sorry for that. So uh, what I was saying is the challenge is always uh, uh, being a single pane or unified visibility, right? And, and especially for use cases like troubleshooting or even security planning. And even we see scenarios, uh, one of the mostly seen scenarios is the gap which we see between the infrastructure or the VMware um, audience and the networking and security teams who rely on traditional tools, right? And which in fact leaves a gray area where there is no visibility at the point where virtual and physical worlds interconnect, right? So hence Network Insight actually brings in a lot of value by bridging this gap uh, as what we have seen with this capability of pulling metrics and flows from a wide range of uh, what we call as the data sources, as you may see, uh, the traditional ones, VMs um, on SDDC, VMware Cloud Foundation, containerized workloads, Kubernetes, PKS, OpenShift, public and hybrid cloud environments, uh, VMC, AWS, Azure, uh, uh, and so on. Physical network devices like routers, firewalls, load balancers, and very importantly, the SD-WAN infrastructures uh, with Velo Cloud. So this data uh, is analyzed by VRNI, hence we don't call that as a real-time monitoring tool, and present it to um, our customers in a way they can, with the help of a very user-friendly UI, as you would see, and easy to write search queries. Uh, do troubleshooting, security planning, application migration, cloud migration, um, data center migration, SD-WAN assessments, and you know, some of the use cases to, um, uh, to mention. So um, the way we want to filter and uh, the way uh, you know, we could view, uh, it could be from a troubleshooting perspective or security assessment, or you may want to visualize a multi-tier application and analyze the flow info within its components. Hence, let's begin with uh, the security planner 101 and applications, and I'll hand it over to my uh, colleague, Ramazan. So I'll stop sharing here. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Just a second, I'm gonna share my... I think it is, it is visible for everyone, yeah? Yeah, can you see my screen? The whole, maybe you can call Yes, them. yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, hello again. The, basically, the um, security planning is the heart of the VRNI. So, 
it is the most used feature uh, for our customers. So the, to use the security plan, you can actually um, use a couple of things. You can use the layer two network and the application side and the VM based. So you can actually protect your VMs per object. But the most used one is the application. So our customers wants to group their applications and group by tier so that they can protect their applications and tiers. So of course there are other applications uh, on shared services like um, DNS and NTP and the AD. So they, they can be uh, high level objects, high level um, groups, but the, basically we focus on the application side. So how we actually um, discover that applications. Uh, before um, 5.2, we basically use the naming convention. So you can actually group your applications by name or text or CMDB. Uh, the CMDB here is coming from ServiceNow. If you have ServiceNow and the um, service map, so you can use it uh, in the URNI. So also the security tags and security groups. So in 5.2, there is a new feature called um, flow-based app discovery uh, introduced. So we are now actually can use it in Network Inside Cloud, but um, for the on-prem side, it is, uh, it's on beta, but you can enable it um, um, after release of 5.3. So now you can actually, but the, the flow-based app application discovery basically um, discover covers your applications and tiers, and it actually assigns a confidence level to your applications and tiers so that you can use it um, for applications. So it actually helps us a lot. And I'm gonna move the other part. So that's the uh, flow-based application discovery. The, the algorithm, it's, it's not uh, that much clear and uh, but it basically discovers all the flows, all the flows coming into the VRNI and it matches that applications, it, it matches that VMs talking to each other. So as I said, it assigns them um, confidence levels so that we can actually um, get our applications and tiers in VRNI. So that's basically how it does. So they, they call it ML magic. Maybe, you know, Martin Smith, the technical uh, marketing architect, they call it magic. So how we actually uh, manage that application-centric uh, micro-segmentation side in NS, in VRNI. So we actually, this is, an, um, this is assessing a current environment, that, so do not actually take that into account. So we actually create services, applications, and after we create that applications, we are getting the recommended firewall rules from network insights. And then we, we will use that rules to create our rules in the NSX, NSX policy manager so that we can repeat it and we can monitor it and then we can actually apply um, the other rules as well. So I'm gonna actually want to show some of the application discovery um, features. Let's just stop this and main screen. Yeah, first of all, let's let's look at the security planning side of PRNI. So basically, so we have 15 minutes, and then we can actually create that applications. When you, when you go into plan and assess site, there's a um, tab called security planning. When you click on it, so there, there are plenty of options here in 5.3. Before that, um, it's, it's much more restricted, but right now you can actually um, um, create a scope actually. So, I mean, the entities, the entity means the, can be application, can be cluster, can be data center site. And also you can actually look into the flows between the entities. What I mean by that, the, you can look 
the um, flows between the application and application and let's look at the other things and security groups and security tags and tiers as well. So let's let's look at all of the flows so that how that how we can actually manage that uh, firewall loose, get that firewall loose. So let's call it less one day for duration and let's take all the parts and let's say group by application, but you can change it later there. So when you click submit, it basically uh, shows us the groups. So I, I don't have any applications. So basically all of the VMs are grouped into others application group. So, and we are seeing that the, there are flows going, you can see that the bi-directional uh, flows between the uh, VMs and the internet and there's no outgoing and incoming tools besides that. So, and in the right hand side, uh, you can actually see the east west traffic between the data center and switched and the router traffic if there is. So, we don't have, we don't have it right now. And it basically shows us the VM to VM. So, all of our traffic, we can say VM to VM. Um, when we look at the host and cloud network, it's it's all host and cloud network because of phase. And you, you see that internet is zero, but it's not zero, it's rounded down so that when you click on it, you can actually um, see the um, flows as well. The everything in VRNI is clickable. So when you click an object, you can, you can see the details of it. So we are seeing that the VM and the connection through the internet and the port, so, you can basically see that if there's something that you don't want to, you don't want a VM to reach the internet, so you can you can find it from here or the search site as well. But it's uh, it's another topic. So, yeah, sorry for the my lab arm is a little bit slow. I just want to close it and then show you the firewall rules, recommended firewall rules. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yes, yes, from yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, we can. It's, it, yeah, it's it's stuck right now. So I I didn't even move my mouse. Sorry for the inconvenience. I don't know what happened. It's not moving. No problem. Um, shall um, we move on to the next part of the demo um, uh, with Royal, and maybe this your interface will load again? Yeah, we can we can come back um, based on the time. In that case. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is this is one of the great things with doing live technical demos. Not everything goes to plan. It's okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, Ramazan, would you want to uh, stop sharing, and then I can. There we go, we flipped over to Raul now. So All right, ready. okay, cool. Um, so, coming to the um, NSXT part, uh, so sorry for the inconvenience in between. Um, firstly, I just wanted to show you um, how um, NSXT uh, support has been enhanced across the various versions of VRNI, starting at 3.9. So in 4.1, we had uh, the Kubernetes visibility with real-time data coming in into NSXT. Um, in 5.0, uh, network flow RTT metrics was introduced. Um, 5.1 actually saw a major enhancement, new dashboard itself for NSXT manager um, with a very good health um, topology view, T0, T1 routers, uh, segment information, security config, and the component health. Um, NSXT BGP information was made available uh, to the routers uh, here and any information on any BGP state changes was reported by uh, Network Insight, right? So, and finally the Kubernetes services dashboard, which we will also see in the demo, which was introduced. 
Now, in 5.2, uh, we started supporting NSXT 3.0. Uh, Transport nodes dashboards was introduced, um, uh, which shows details about the edge and the host, uh, where we could retrieve uh, metrics like for the Phoenix, the TEPs, uh, system metrics uh, like system uptime, uh, resource consumption. And finally, at 5.3, we saw a lot of enhancement to the uh, NSXT latency uh, again, um, and also metrics uh, supported for um, uh, and uh, latency metrics and and also we introduced support for the uh, TCP retransmission counts on a per flow basis, which was very uh, crucial for the uh, troubleshooting, right? So, so what do we expect from NSXT dash T support with VRNI? In fact, a lot, right? So, um, an interest of time, we'll go over a few key basic out of the box dashboards, which will be useful for you, and uh, where we look for the uh, metrics. What is supported here is the namespace groups, uh, the firewall rules, IP sets, um, NSXT logical ports, logical switches, uh, distributed firewall, uh, DFW IP fix flows, uh, because we don't support flows from the switches, it's from the firewall, DFW, segment, group, and policy uh, based VPN, right? So those are some of the uh, uh, the uh, metrics which is available. And with a very simple search queries, right? So for example, NSXT followed by transport node or manager, which we will see, we can get into the respective dashboards, right? And um, we can also track events. So for some of the customers, we have audit use cases, uh, which says like, you know, which user made what change, right? It could be around discovery or it could be around say deletion of a firewall rule, uh, change of a config or a rule, Etc. Right. So that those are the those are the things. So what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look into the the demo environment. So um, I just wanted to start with like how would we um, add a data source, right? So VRNI needs all the objects what it needs to be uh, monitored to be added as a data source. And uh, this is a fresh setup. It doesn't have any uh, data source added as of yet. So this is pretty much the place where we do that. Uh, where we go into settings, we say add source. And if you see under VMware managers. We have the VMware NSXT manager. Click on that. We just associate that with the collector VM because, as you're all uh, most of you are aware, it's a collector VM and the platform VM. And it's a collector which actually talks to the data sources. The platform does not speak directly to the data sources. So here we just provide the IP or the FTDN of the NSXT manager. right? And in cases where you have multiple managers in your environment, you just uh, provide one manager information or the virtual IP if they're behind a load balancer provide by, followed by the username and password. And then these are the checkbox what you see are optional, which says enable uh, IP fix. Now this is where we pull the flow information. And if you really want the uh, DW, uh, D DFW IP fix flow information, uh, the user should have the enterprise admin or the security engineer or the network engineer credentials. Otherwise it's just an audit uh, role permission which is needed plus the latency metric collection. And uh, for the latency, uh, we actually uh, you know, can fetch inter-object latency, which could be TEP to TEP latency, VNIC to PNIC, uh, PNIC to VNIC, VNIC to VNIC uh, from NSXT. These are the values which come in, right? So um, I'll just- Can I jump in and say any question? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So it's a disturb. I, I, I get the question from customers saying if the IP fix enable, uh, is it got any impact on the infrastructure? Do you get um, questions like this as well? Yes, yes, we do. So um, uh, it, it's, it's actually a very valid question and we hear this from the customers as well. So what they say is like there are two things, right? So one is these are the VMware uh, managers, which is basically the vCenter and the NSX managers from where it actually um, uh, uh, pulls the information, right? So these are basically the NetFlow and the IPFIX uh, uh, metrics. The uh, typically what they say is this is just even less than half of one percentage is the performance impact is what they say, right? And the other guideline what we need to um, suggest customers to follow is if you have an environment where your entire infrastructure, uh, vSphere infrastructure, all the clusters are being managed by NSX or NSXT, you need not enable IPFIX or NetFlow on the vCenter data source or the, uh, the, the distributed data. So you just need to enable it at the NSX um, uh, level, right? So that, that can also enhance the performance, but the performance impact is uh, very, very less. And for the other data sources, like the external firewalls or switches, the physical, um, um, in, you know, uh, the other, the, the multi-vendor data sources, uh, where we use uh, typically the SSH and SNMP, uh, it's near to zero because that's pretty much all the tools would do, right? So this is, this is the typical guideline what we follow, yeah. Does that answer the question? 
Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Okay, so now here we are uh, on the, uh, the main page, the landing page of NSXT. Now, there are two ways, like if you go into environments and then uh, you have the NSXT listed here as, as an option. Or let's say if you just want to, we'll just go into the dashboards in interest of time. So uh, starting with the NSXT manager, it's um, a pretty straightforward, simple um, search query. Just type NSXT manager. And it actually lists all the managers, the NSX managers, which are there in the environment, um, just would load uh, the events with that as well. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So we just click on any one of the managers, which are listed here, and it will show us all the metrics which are related to that, right? So this is the summary widget, followed by how many firewall rules, how many transport zones, how many application groups, like the one which Ramadan was mentioning, the unprotected flows, which can be used for from a, from a security standpoint for troubleshooting. And if we actually scroll down, you can see the whole topology. Now, this is the, uh, the most uh, interesting part with the, with the dashboard for the NSXT manager. It actually shows you the whole view where you have the vCenter, you have like, let's say 75 virtual machines, a three ESXi host, one edge cluster. Uh, there is a two node management cluster, right? And um, yeah, and then the virtual IP. Now this is the virtual IP, which I was mentioning, which you should be adding as part of the data source. Now, what you see on the right side are, is the logical constraint, right? So where you have the firewall, uh, the DFW, the uh, NSXT security groups, which have been created, we click on each of them, it will give you a detailed information. So this, this, this is the best part, right? You don't have to write, really go into the NSX manager to fetch all this information. Everything is available over here on the UI and uh, followed by the layer two network, the T0 router and the tier one uh, router, right? And let's say if, we, if I just want to um, identify, let's say a specific issue, which is related to one of the NSX managers, I just click on that and it lists down all the events. So if you can see um, one of the critical events, which has been listed as the password uh, expired, right? So helps us in proactively identifying these issues. We, we scroll down, it actually shows us uh, various other information, for example, flows, right? And um, how, how much of flows, the incoming flows in the last 24 hours, the outgoing flows. And let's say if in a scenario, somebody has noticed uh, uh, an abnormal increase or surge in the number of flows, I, I would just, uh, click on that flows and it will give me a detailed flow information uh, of all the flows which are happening in the environment as you can see and let's say I want to filter down so this is where uh, like I was mentioning we slice and dice the data which we get from NSX uh, fr from the from VRNI for to identify what do we exactly want right so let's say I want to specify specifically uh, you know, uh, search with a certain IP address a source IP address and uh, it's just loading and then this makes it easier for me to search for that uh, search for the flows uh, for that particular IP address right so if I just click here and then I can just type in the IP address value which I want and that should pull out the uh, flows for that particular uh, or, or uh, for that particular IP address right so uh, these are some of the things um, easy to use uh, things which are available out of the box uh, with VRNI and similarly, we have for every uh, object, right? You know, which you which you search and pull out, we have the metrics, which is more of like a uh, like a health, right? So uh, if you see the CPU usage and the memory usage uh, rate for that particular object, and we can actually go into the historical information of that as well over a period of time, right? So this is these are some of the things you know, which you can actually see uh, with the with the NSXT manager dashboard. And similarly, we have um, something called as the um, the, country, the the transport node dashboard, right? So if I just type in NSX hyphen T and the transport node, it lists, it will list all the transport nodes which are there in the environment. And as you can see, it clearly differentiates whether it is a host transport node or an edge transport node. And based on uh, which is the one which we need the information for, I can, I can just uh, click on the specific instance and it will take me to the dashboard of that page. And if you can see, this is the one which I was mentioning where it shows the PNIC statistics, right? The, uh, the maximum network transfer rate, uh, the network interfaces, uh, outgoing flow traffic, incoming flow traffic, all of these metrics. And like you see, if I scroll down, uh, one more new thing, what you would see here is the tap to tap latency. 
Now, why did we? Why did? Why did it come? Because one is it's a host transport node. Uh, right now, which uh, which which participates in the overlay communication, and um, this is and here it actually shows all the other transport nodes communicating with this particular transport node and what is the latency. Now, all these are the ho the host transport nodes, and if you had an edge transport node configured here, you would have seen that listed here as well. Right. So this is this, this the way we can. Uh, search and then even for the system metrics, we have seen instances where some of the customers have wrongly sized their edge node cluster. Like instead of uh, large, they would have just gone for a medium because they were on a previous version. And at some point, they'll start hitting issues where they see uh, the, the load balancer going down or the load balancer service going down, the, bringing down the services. So we can actually go here and proactively see the resource utilization on these nodes, right? So from from the uh, the whole dashboard which is available here, right? Um, so now let's say from a security standpoint, right? So even though the security planner, which uh, Ramazan was mentioning, helps us to identify the east, west, the north, south, the unpredicted flows. Now, just we, we just want to make a quick search specific to a particular uh, NSX manager, where I would just be uh, mentioning, let's say flows, right? So where firewall rule is not set. So now this is just auto-populating because we have done that search before. And it lists down all the searches, uh, all the flows, which is which are the unprotected ones, right? Now, let's say I want to add a filter over here, and uh, that I would say, let's say a manager, and it lists down the uh, the managers which are available here, and then I can just uh, manually type in the specific NSX manager for which I'm looking for and it will list down the unprotected flows uh, for that alone right um, now we also spoke about the 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 tap to tap latency the vnic to vnic latency now we know that this uh, so we'll just go back to the the transport node again so let's say the same query uh, nsxt transport node and um, Let's pull this one, right? So, which is the, um, uh, which is again a host, a host transport node. Um, I would just copy the name of the instance. Sorry. Yeah. So instead of um, searching for this host from a from a transport node context, right? I'll just search it from a host context, right? So I just type host space uh, the instance. It will actually list down all the metrics specific to the host, right? And just because NSXT has this, this is an entity which belongs to NSXT and NSXT identifies this as a host transport node which is where if I come down, if you see there are this la network latency per PNIC and there is network latency details, which is mentioned here. And we have, we can actually use the parameters to do a PNIC to VNIC latency, VNIC to PNIC latency, uh, VTEP to VTEP, uh, VNIC to VNIC. So all these things would be available here. Now this won't be available for a generic uh, 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 ESXi host, which is part of the vCenter. Now, like I said, this is some of the uh, ways in which you can search for the data, you know, easy to search. You can type in the, the query more or less like a Google search on this and then get into the specific objects. Uh, let's say you want to uh, click on a certain firewall in the whole topology. It will show you the firewall rules which are which are present. So it makes it easier for an admin or, or somebody from the operations or even from the network operations to kind of uh, navigate into the custom information what they are looking for, right? So this is uh, what I uh, pretty much wanted to show on the uh, the NSXT part, right? And then uh, we'll just continue with the next section, which is uh, the visibility, uh, which is on uh, VRNI with Kubernetes, right? All right. So so here it is more apt to say only Kubernetes, right? Why? Because VRNI does not connect to Docker or any other Linux VMs, right? However, it connects to Kubernetes as the orchestration engine and looks up the container info below that, right? So that, that's how that's how it functions. So Kubernetes support was actually introduced, like we saw uh, from the previous slides from uh, somewhere around 4.2 onwards and has been enhanced since then with dedicated dashboards uh, and metrics, right? So uh, it can be from any form. Um, it can be from the vanilla Kubernetes or it can be 
VMware PKs or it can be OpenShift. Uh, what, what needs to be noted here is if you want to add uh, any of these uh, Kubernetes instances as a data source, we need to ensure that it should be underpinned with NSXT, right? Uh, that, that, that is the, the, the first criteria because that is where the whole networking and security information comes from. Now, what to expect over here, uh, starting with day zero operations like inventory collection, um, where VRNI pulls information like namespaces, service, um, cluster, pod, node information, etc., and also enables the user to build an application construct like what you see, uh, what Amazon was showcasing using the Kubernetes services, right? And uh, traffic and uh, path visibility as a, uh, can be used for troubleshooting because it uses NSX and uh, similarly security planning can also be done. And with regards to the day two operations, as you see here, we have the complete information on Kubernetes. So we know how many pods are running for a particular service. Uh, hence, we can keep a track of the scalability right? in, in case if we want to scale up the resources. Um, secondly, for troubleshooting, we can get the path visibility between Kubernetes instances and understand if uh, there is, for example, a routing issue in between that's causing a communication problem, right? <clears throat> now, this is a security planner, like what we saw earlier, where we can group by namespaces, right? Uh, we can group by Kubernetes service names, and we can even group by clusters, right? And then see the allowed flows and the block flows and all the information around the flows which are happening. The good part here is, as you can see, uh, once we have the recommended firewall rules which come, this can be exported into a YAML file and it can be directly imported into a Kubernetes environment because the moment we create a, uh, no, uh, a Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster, there is a cube config file which, which gets created and we just need to uh, you know, uh, import this, uh, import the YAML file onto that, right? So that's that's the way we can, and the security policies will automatically get enforced. So we don't need a third party tool actually to do that. And uh, one of the unique differentiator, which we all should know here is the correlation between the Kubernetes environment and the underlying vSphere infrastructure, right? Uh, that is which, uh, you know, that is which pod runs on which VM node on which ESXi host, for example. And we have Carol, all the information. In yeah, sure. Sorry to stop your flow there, but we do have a question in the Q&A if you'd like yeah. to answer that live. All right. Um, uh, so uh, Org has a question around, can we also check the latency from a client outside the DC to a VM if we have all the physical devices as VRNI uh, data source added? Yes, we can do that. And uh, we, we will be able to do that if, um, in my understanding, if it is uh, NSXT uh, based environment, right? So where the, uh, the for, for the incoming traffic, which, which uh, comes in from an external source as well. Yes, we can do that. Can I ask a question? Sure. You mentioned that we can uh, um, connect uh, OpenShift into mm -hmm. the uh, VRNI. Yes. But you said that we must, uh, um, or maybe I misunderstood, we must have NSXT in order to be able to connect them, or that I can look straight on the VCN on the OpenShift? Uh, no, so you would need to have NSXT. So that uh, NSXT remains a common prerequisite for all the three ways of uh, uh, no, uh, associating Kubernetes environments with VRNI, vanilla or OpenShift or uh, PKs. So NSXT is a, is a mandate because that's where we actually get the, the, the flow information and the network and security information. So we don't have a direct uh, way of getting the information, fetching the information from the uh, external sources. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, quickly switch over to a, a short demo on this. So, like I said, um, on the uh, so, so okay, so before that, uh, what I wanted to show here is the way we add the data sources, like, uh, because as you see here, so uh, we had one of the questions just now. Um, when you want to add the data source, the first prerequisite is you need to specify the NSXT manager, right? It, it applies for both uh, PKs or for Kubernetes uh, or OpenShift. And then we specify the NSXT, uh, sorry, the PK. So here, in this case, if it is PKI, we, PKS, we, we specify the PKS API server, I, um, you know, IP address or FQDN, followed by the username and password. 
uh, that will actually pull the information from all the Kubernetes clusters which is running beneath. But then, if you want to add a vanilla Kubernetes environment, similar as you want to specify the NSXT manager information, uh, the kubeconfig file, and here, the only thing what we need to note here is you can add only one cluster as a time, one Kubernetes cluster at a time as a data source. So if you want to add a second uh, Kubernetes cluster, that needs to be added separately as a separate data source. So this is something which you need to, I mean, we, we need to note here. So uh, going back to the demo environment, so like I said, uh, among the inbuilt dashboards, we have a, a new dashboard, not, not, not a new one anymore, but then we have a separate dashboard for Kubernetes. We click on that. And this actually shows you the whole summary of the Kubernetes environment, right? So the events, uh, the clusters, the namespaces, the services, the nodes, the pods, all these information, we can click on that and go into the individual uh, entities. Here we see the categorization uh, by namespace, Kubernetes pods by namespace. Uh, so like, you know, how many pods uh, and uh, no, how many pods belong or fall under a specific namespace, which is a logical construct as, as you're aware. And uh, Kubernetes pods by service, like every cluster, how many pods does it contain? And then we go into individual uh, objects and then we can see the details from there. Uh, even in terms of flows, like as you can see, it actually shows you the flows which are generated by, let's say the top talking Kubernetes clusters, right? Or the top talking Kubernetes namespaces. And then we can, we can specifically go into the, uh, the services from here uh, and then uh, see like you know, what, what, what's causing the increased flow. And similarly, we have also a health uh, metric which is available for the Kubernetes service. And here, uh, you know, we can actually see that uh, it, it, it shows how many pods are running without a service in it, right? And how many received packet drops, which, which have been seen, um, part of which service. And also there is a node health, which is reported here. Let's say if there was a memory issue, it will be captured here and then we can, we can easily uh, identify that, that particular error. So <clears throat> having said that, uh, we'll just go into the services uh, dashboard. This is the one which is again, uh, which was introduced, I think by uh, within uh, uh, around 5.1. And here it will show you all the services which are available, all the Kubernetes services which are available. Let's click on one of them. Uh, this actually gives you a dashboard plus a great topology view, as you can see, right? So this is the uh, uh, the service boundary, and then you it will give you the node information and the pod information. Sorry. Uh, right, and then it gives me the logical switch, right? The T1 router information, the T0 router, and all the way to the physical device, what it is connecting to, right? And the way it, it traverses the internet. And even if you want to click on, let's say one of the routers, it actually shows me the, uh, the firewall rules, you know, which are applied onto that particular uh, service, right? So you can see, uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. So this is the uh, the the T zero router. It shows the um, any allow for rule ID one zero two five for on the edge firewall instance, right? So we can identify the firewall rules also. And uh, what you get, what you see on the on the left side is the uh, the the master node information, right? As well, which is uh, talking to this particular uh, service, right? Now, uh, in terms of the uh, um, let's say the path information, right? So, I just uh, pick a, but th these are the services which you see, and uh, let's say to a. Uh, so I'm just trying to identify the uh, path information. So I think there was something wrong with the.
Okay, so probably there was something, uh, some error in that particular part. So what, what we actually expect to see here is it actually shows you the entire path, uh, the communication path from uh, 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 a service, the way it traverses through a firewall instance all the way to a, a, a logical um, um, switch and any other NSXT constructs that comes in between. And it also shows you the L2, uh, uh, sorry, the underlay uh, path information. So it, it shows you the underlay information where it actually shows us the, even the details of the physical device as which, as well, right? So um, I actually configured something with, which had a L3 Dell switch on it, which I wanted to show uh, on this, but there is some, some issue that looks, uh, seems to be with the, with the particular path, right? So, yeah, so these are some of the things, you know, which, uh, which, we can actually uh, do with the uh, with the help of uh, uh, network insight in terms of Kubernetes visibility, and uh, yeah. So if I may just yeah, yeah Raul, I can maybe I can go on if you you if you're done, I can. Oh, okay, go okay. On because the I, application side. I just had like one last, but yeah. That's, okay, uh, let's do that, and then and then. Yeah, maybe I'll just finish that uh, real quick, and then we can come back to you. All right, uh, so the final thing, uh, final uh, section from my side was the uh, integration with Realize Operations, which was a much awaited integration by our customers and uh, mainly to have a unified visibility. Now this being, this was introduced with VROps 8.1 and VRNI 5.2. Uh, the first step was to have the VRNI alerts being pulled into VROps, hence not having to shuffle between two different tools. That was the main thing. And the second was the support uh, for the uh, VIDM, uh, SSO login between the two tools. And finally, uh, we can actually do a, a in-context uh, object page launch, right, from VROps to VRNI, making it easier to troubleshoot, let's say, for any, uh, any network issues, right? So um, I would just uh, kind of try to go into a VROps instance. So this is, let's say we are, we are looking at the, the VROps main page and uh, we're just searching for specific alerts in the active state. I will just give a keyword like VR9. And here I've just grouped by objects. <laughs> One thing what we need to note here is there are two types of the, the alerts which are uh, pulled from VRNI by VROps are actually triggered on two types of objects, right? So you can see either listed as VRNI others or you will see the specific instance which uh, VROps identifies where it needs to trigger the alert, right? So here in this case, let's say um, I've, I'm seeing one of the critical alerts on a host where it just says uh, the, VM, the host, VRNI host with infrastructure VMs cannot be accessed. So I just click on that and uh, it, it, it just gives me a very brief description. So what I would uh, want to do is I'll just click on that particular host, go into the host uh, dashboard or the main page on Vitalize Operations. And from there, I would uh, try to launch in context on Vitalize Network Inside. Yeah, so it launches the page for that particular host. And here, you know, to get a little bit more of additional information. So this gives me a complete summary of, uh, of that particular host from a resource perspective, from a uh, network connection, uh, connectivity, all the metrics are listed here. And if you see, these are the events which are triggered. So maybe I just want to maximize this and it will show me all the, let's say all the 174 events listed on that particular uh, host. And then I can uh, probably just try to filter based on the, uh, based on the relevant error message over here. So here, you, as you can see, the whole purpose of showing you this was, you can see a bit more descriptive uh, information provided by VRNI. Uh, here it just shows a basic network connectivity issue between the host and the vCenter server and uh, provides a possible, uh, uh, you know, rec a recommendation which could be a possible fix for that particular. So in, in such a way, there could be like a lot of, uh, 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 you know, metrics which we can collect. 
And one important thing before I uh, hand over to Ramazan is that the uh, the way we configure this, right? So the first thing is uh, having a having the management pack for VRNI. So as you can see on the other accounts, this is downloaded from the solution exchange. So as you can see, the one which is listed here. Second, very, very important thing is to have the NSXT management pack, which as you're all aware is already inbuilt into VROps. So with these two things, we uh, it makes it much more easier to identify the object and the metrics which is coming in from uh, VRI. Right? So, so yeah, so this is pretty much what I wanted to show and uh, I'll, I'll quickly hand it over to Ramazan. Ramazan over. Yeah. Right, Royal Rose. On just before we got uh, continue with the the session, because we're getting close to the top of the hour, I just want to open it up for anybody that has any questions that they want to ask um, about what's okay. being shown. Um, we'll have to take live questions, questions in the chat or the Q and A, um, and then we'll move back to Ramazan and I'll finish off recording uh, past the hour with him. For anyone who wants to stay on for the for that, they can do. Um, is there any questions from anyone that's still on the call at the moment? Okay, no problem. Uh, Ramazan, please go ahead. Okay, thank you again. Um, I'm sharing it again. So, that's the secret thing we were talking about. And then I'm click on this object so we are gonna see the actually um, here we see the layer 2 network source to destination and the sum of bytes and traffic rate etc so if I group it by application so I'm gonna see that source and destination application and each of them are talking each other's and then if I want to um, get that rules then export that rules i can click that three dots here and then export the rules as csv for the xml is basically used for the nsx3 so it will be and i think like at the 2023 and we are seeing that the yaml is straight out because we are not actually selected any kubernetes namespace or kubernetes the service as i will mention if you select those and if you have those services in our network inside so we can basically export that rules and um, apply for our kubernetes applications so that's basically the security planning side and i'm going to jump on the application side so we can click on here or basically we can just write application and we can go the application Side. So if we have applications in place, uh, we are going to see them here in the applications tab. So if you don't have, um, we can use the discover tab to create our, our applications or let we are not to discover them. So I just basically created two of them and we are going to create and the third one together. So once we click on the discover side, we're going to see the four tabs, I mean tags, it means that if you have custom attributes or um, if you have tags and vCenter, so you can use them to group your applications and group it by tiers. So if you have service now, you can use your CMDB and you can use your VM names and the advanced tab uh, we are going to talk about. So let's let's use the um, VM tags and create an application together. So I just created an, an app name um, category in vCenter and I'm going to write my application name it's called test app so if i write down test app so it will basically discover my application and then i want to uh, group it by tiers so i have app tier category in vcenter so i just write app tier and i just want to group it by sorry oh if Hang on a second. Yeah, if I write my tier app and it will discover the um, application here as well. And if I click on discover here, so it will basically discover the application and as we see here and the tiers. So I have one tier and two VMs. So I, if I save it, I will have that application. So 
I will jump on the service now. So basically, I don't have any service now environment. But I'm going to show that uh, service now map here. If oh, I just lost it. Sorry. Let's jump on names and advance. So maybe we can go back because we're run out of time. So let's focus on the name side. And if you have VM names, so you can actually use that VM names to create your applications and tiers. So um, this is basically using the regex. So I'm just I'm just gonna take the first part of the uh, VM name. So if you if you type like that, so I'm gonna use this VM name. So I will type dot and star. It will basically um, get the. Sorry. It will basically get the uh, F01 or VHA as the app name. So this is just um, getting the app name before the dash. So this is just um, regex. And the the other part as well, um, just ignore the first two parts, dot star dash and dot star dash. And the last part uh, with the brackets, um, I will take the app and web tiers using that regex part. You can also use pattern builder to um, create this because you don't have to remember all of the things. So let's let's select a sample VM. So let's take this F01 VM to an F. So you will say that uh, my tiers is the last three words or the last word before the dash. So you can just basically click on it and you will see that your tiers app, app and this is my test tier. So it will help you to create that um, regex expressions because maybe you, you're familiar with regex, so it's it's hard to remember and create that um, patterns. So if you submit it, um, actually it will it will tell us that I found three application tiers. So and then you can again click on discover and it will actually will create our tier. So I just created the F01, so it will create the VHA, um, one VM and one tier. Uh, in the advanced tab, advanced tab also um, help us to create that um, applications and tiers using the pattern builder. So we also, we actually um, tried it in the names tab. So I just wanna show you um, quick um, automation script that, that was created by Martin Smith because um, you're not, you don't want to um, create your applications and tiers by manually. So you, you're gonna have that, you, you, you're gonna need these, the automation script. If you have applications and, and, and tiers and want to create a bulk application, um, so you can use the um, application bulk import script. Uh, I will share the link from the chat after creating this um, this bulk application. So I'm going to use that two VMs and two um, tiers. So here's actually uh, using the Network Insight APIs. So the Martin is created um, PowerShell CMD Lab, so we can we can use it for creating that applications. So I have one file apps.csv. And let's look at that file. So if you look at that file, I just need application tier, security group or VM name. So you don't need to security group if you don't want to. So we just left it empty. The application is called F02 and I will call it F03 because I just created F02. And it will create two tiers called web and app and it will um, assign two VMs each of the uh, tiers. So let's save it after saving it. So before you just have, to, you just have to connect to VRNS or I just did it before. Um, so I will basically um, run that and it will create us the app tree and to say I, I am funded and I'm gonna create app and here so basically it will it's it created f03 and 
um, two tiers called web and app. So let's look at the uh, we are nice side so that if we have those applications created here or not. As we can see here, um, we have um, two applications here. Um, um, sorry, one, one application is called Absurd E and two tiers. Um, the members are not seen yet, but basically it will create all our applications and tiers by using that script. So I I want to share the um, link from chat and also you can look at the Martin's blog because it, it has a lot of cool information and um, I think it will be yeah, pretty much helpful for you as well. So let's let me one. After um, stopping the share, I, I, I can actually uh, share the link. So it basically does that. And let's look at the last part. Um, and it's the uh, flow based app discovery. This is the, the field demo environment that all of us uh, are aware of. So if you connect and um, came into the application and discovered tab, so you're going to see the flows and it says beta because it's in beta for on premises. And so just click on it. And this is uh, the applications discovered automatically by the VRNI. And this is the confidence levels. If you have the, the is in production environment, it's, it's most probably will be the, the higher confidence levels because this is just uh, actually changing environment. So it's the confidence, confidence levels are um, low and medium. So it will say, yeah, you have an application name, FPL demo dev and two tiers and third one VM. So of course, and you can say that, that that's not the case for me and you can discard it or when once you look for, for the high confidence level, basically it will make sure that that's your application. So it, once you click on it, it will show you the third one VMs and the, the actually the flows between them. So basically, this is this is uh, all from me now, and I just want you to just show you a quick, cool demo for from Postman side. If you're not familiar with Postman, I I just want you to um, uh, use it for the for our real life suite environments because it will help you a lot. Let's let's just look at a quick um, example. I just said the Power VRNI PowerShell script basically use um, networking site APIs in the backend. So let's look for the get token um, method for the network inside. So you can basically you need a body and the headers. That's, that's just um, application JSON says, I just exact the application JSON headers as content type. And once you fill that like your body with your username and your password, and you just have to mention your um, domain name as well. And you can, you can post it and it will, it will give you the token and expiry date. It's just in milliseconds. So you just have to convert them in the, in the, in the, the readable time zone. So once you click here on code, it will show you the basic code. So whichever uh, the language you are familiar, actually you can use it. That's the, that's the idea here. So if you are familiar with PowerShell, you can use it. If, you're, uh, if you want to use Python request or if you're going to use um, HTTP client of Python, you can use it. So it will give you the uh, the script. So it, yeah, you you have to play on play on this um, generated script a little bit, but it will help you a lot. And then you can create your own script and own CMD lets um, basically. So that's all from me now. Uh, that's that's a whole topic. Um, maybe we can have another session to um, get deeper into this. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, uh, Ramazan, and thank you, Raul. Um, just, uh, I think Raul's got a little bit more for us to show, but whilst he starts sharing again, I notice there's a few of you that have actually waited right on past the hour, which I really appreciate. Any questions or queries about the content we've shown? Okay, no problem, Raul, over to you and I'll let you end the webinar.
Yeah, sure. So th th yeah. thanks, Dean. So just the, the missing part, uh, which I was trying to show, which was the path visibility, which I was showing. So this is pretty much the, the search query, like Kubernetes service, the service name, uh, and two Kubernetes service, again, the destination service name, right? And this actually brings up the complete path visibility, uh, which shows you the, the, the pod um, information. And this is a firewall information, which if I kind of uh, click on that, it actually shows me uh, the, the details about the uh, the firewall as well so that is here. yeah so this shows me the firewall rule which is which is actually following and all the way to the the logical port information and uh, all the way to the destination right and what you see on the right side as i was saying is the vm underlay uh, where uh, it actually shows the the l2 network on the nsxt all the way to the vlan network segment and all the way down to the physical device which it is connecting to as i was saying so if i just click on that um, it is actually a dell l3 switch so this is the path visibility you know which uh, uh, which we get on the kubernetes side as well so uh, hence in summary right so uh, there are a lot of ways to uh, navigate uh, to the custom information you want uh, out of uh, uh, BRNI. and um, the use cases uh, we mentioned in the beginning and encourage all of you to play around with these search queries in the, the CMU, de the, the demo labs, which we have. And I would really want to thank you all for your participation in this uh, time lab session. Uh, and thank you very much. Yeah.